Hello and welcome! This is Elliot with Rickety Ski Reviews and today we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to talk A to Z, head to toe, what gear do I wear, what gear do I pack, and what ski gear do I use personally. Now, starting out, this is not a sponsored segment. All of this gear was either given to me as a gift by a friend or I bought myself. There's no sponsorship, there's no brands paying for anything, I have no relationships with any of these brands. This is just what I spent my own money on and what I keep in my bag when I go skiing. So, let's jump right into it and I can show you everything I use. Let's start going from head to toe. The helmet is the most important piece of equipment other than my boots. The ski boots are obviously the most important piece, but the helmet comes in in a close second. Keeping my head safe, I made sure that I went with a POC product that has multi-impact and MIPS, which are two different things. MIPS is basically preventing brain rotation and multi-impact means that if a branch comes in, it's not going to compromise the integrity of the helmet. So let me show you. I've got the POC or cut. You'll notice it's a different color than some of my older reviews. Basically what happened is my wife wanted a different helmet. Originally I had bought us both the exact same helmet with different colors. So she said she wanted a different helmet. I said, hey, I'll buy your next helmet and I'll take your old one because I just love this orc cut. The way that it feels, the way it has multi-impact and MIPS. Not only that, they don't make the orc cut anymore and the fit for me is just perfect. They make some other nice helmets but I just don't like the style and I don't like the fit. I'm really sad they got rid of this helmet but man, this is a nice helmet. Puck, orc cut, again, I always buy stuff in the summer so it's pretty severely discounted. Rubber band in the back I found for the goggles works really well. Really well ventilated. I get really warm when I ski. I have really good circulation so Really enjoy the ventilation on this one. Next, let's talk goggles. So the goggles I've been running traditionally for the last year are my POC Retina XL. I don't worry too much about the flat light with these. These are really just meant to block the sun out, block the wind out, but I really wanna make sure that I'm blocking the sun out because it's so bright. That bothers me more than having a little bit of flat light here and there. I really care about protecting my eyes, keeping the sun off of them, and being able to kind of see in those really, really sunny days, just based on the climate I'm at. When I was back in Vermont, I cared more about flat light, but where I am now out west, really just gotta keep the sun off. I got the XL because I have a giant head. Love the cut on these. Love the nice full range. Like I like larger goggles because I like the kind of field of range. They also prevent me from getting a goggle gap, but these POC Retina XLs, love them. I've had them for about two years now and they've been great. Whenever I store my goggles, I always clean them and make sure they go back in the bag. I'm really careful with my goggles just because they're important. The next ones that I got, these are the POC Orc cut, I believe. I got these also this summer on sale. These have a little bit better, a little bit better flat light and dealing with that. This is called the Comp lens and I really like the Comp lens so far in what I've seen just because it kind of gives you the reds and blues in a way that gives you depth reception in the flat light. I'm excited for these goggles. I haven't had them on the snow yet, but I just got these for like a very, very steep discount over the summer and I'm super happy with them. Like I always tell people, summer's the time to buy ski gear. So for Neckies, these were just kind of given to me one was given to me by my father-in-law, it's just Tubbs. It works at ski shops, so I think it's like a promotional thing. Not sponsored by Tubbs, but just what I have. I love these kind of thinner neckies, because like I said, I get pretty warm. I mostly just want to keep the wind off of my face, getting damaged that way for really windy days. I get the really big snowboard jackets, so the color tends to cover my face, but I like something thin like this. I also have this one I stole from my wife that she got at a conference. This rules. Again, not sponsored by anything. These are just things I've come by over the years. Just basic, basic neckies. I know people need like the really thick ones. People have really bad circulation. I am just a warm guy. I don't know if it's growing up in Northeast Vermont, but I stay super warm. A lot of times it's just, if I can keep the wind, especially out here, or a little bit of rain or snow off of my face, the rest I can keep myself warm with. So these are my neckies. I also, I ordered a thicker one for really cold days, but I don't plan on using this more than a handful of days just because I don't need it. But there are days where it's just brutally windy and cold. And those are usually the best powder days, so <laughs> you don't wanna miss out. Put this one on, made by Smartwool. Tend to really like Smartwool stuff. Now, onto the jackets. First off, this is my fleece. This is a Patagonia Retro X. Again, not sponsored by Patagonia. They just are very ethical and environmentally conscious, so I try to support them if I can. I actually buy my clothes used from Patagonia. So this is part of their used wear. Patagonia Retro X jacket, so you can see. But this is what I call my driving fleece. I wear this in the car on the drive up. One, it keeps me warm, obviously, when it's cold. Two, 
I like having it and I take it off before I ski and that way when I get done skiing at the end of the day and go into my car, I have something that's not only warm but also dry. It's really important for me to be dry and warm on the ride after because you know, your stuff is just gonna be either soaked or cold. It's nice to have something that's fresh and warm when you get done at the end of the day. So this is what I do. It also kind of has a dual purpose that if it's really, really cold, I can pack this as a layer under my shells and stay toasty. I've never had to do that, but it's nice to have it in case of an emergency. So let's talk jackets. Next I have my DC Haven jacket. I bought this about two or three years ago. It's a pretty light shell. It works really great, lots of range of motion, but it is not the warmest jacket I've ever owned. And it's definitely not the most waterproof, but the most comfortable, and especially on almost every day where it's warm, or you just got a little bit of wind, this keeps me warm most of the time. But full disclosure, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the warmest, and I don't know if a lot of my friends who have poor circulation would really love it. It was about 180 when I bought it in the summer. I love snowboard gear. Keep the snow out of my wrists with these. Lots of pockets on the inside. Big hood to keep the snow out. This is a nice jacket. I love the cut, I love the design. In hindsight, I wish I had maybe spent more money on Gore-Tex or something that's gonna keep the snow out a little bit better, or the, especially the rain when it gets really wet. Not the best for that, and also not the most insulated, but it works. Plenty of ventilation, which is what I mostly care about. Ventilation here. It's not the nicest jacket, but it's what I could afford, and the cut and the fit is the nicest. Material, again, I was kind of balling on a budget, so I didn't go for anything crazy. But overall, I love this jacket. I've worn it probably 100 to 200 days total. Really, really nice. Now, I did end up buying a jacket this summer just because I wanted something a little bit beefier for water protection and also a little bit warmer. But for this, 90% of the time, it was a great jacket. I definitely got my money's worth with this. Next, I have the Volcom Gore-Tex L jacket. I haven't used this jacket yet, but it has Gore-Tex. It was ethically made, which is really important to me. I was looking at it, I only spent about $15 more because again, I bought it in the summer than I did on my DC. I wanna say it was about $190 total. So when people tell me, oh, you have to get Montec, it's the only thing under $200. No, not necessarily. If you look in the summer, you can get some really great deals. Yeah, I love this jacket, I'm stoked already. I haven't put it on snow, so take that with a grain of salt, but I'm excited, and from everything I'm feeling, it feels really high quality, and it fits really well. Now, if that's what I use most of the time for jackets. I also have this one extreme jacket that was given to me. I was given this jacket back in 2010. It's the first Ascent jacket, which is just Eddie Bauer. It was given to me by my brother from the Birds of Prey event. He worked at this event two years, so once he got his new jacket, he gave me the old one. But this is the warmest jacket I've ever owned. Long sleeves, full hood, but this thing is, I mean, you look like the Michelin Man, but you are warm, holy moly. This is a warm, warm jacket. In the past, I've had snowboard jackets that were down and big and puffy. The bigger and puffier, the better. Back when I used to ski race, people would make fun of me and my friend for having these big puffy jackets. But you know what? You spend so much time standing on the top of the hill <laughs> that having a warm puffy jacket is like the way to keep your muscles warm and be ready for the race. If you live on the East Coast, don't be too proud to get a big puffy. I don't even know much about First Ascent, nice big pocket, but I've had this jacket for 13 years now, maybe somewhere between 10 and 13 years, and it's lasted really well, and it's kept me warm on the coldest of days. Okay, next I have this Patagonia fleece. This is what I wear for cold days as a base layer when it gets really cold. I almost never use this, but I always keep it in my bag in case. Now this is a nice fleece. I actually bought this on eBay, and if I get a rip, Patagonia will still repair it, which is awesome. I bought it for about 30 bucks used, nice top quarter zip. This stays in my bag most of the year, but it's always there as an emergency if I want kind of one more layer underneath. I wear it all the time, I'm not afraid to get it dirty, and for 30 bucks, a jacket that you can send in and get repaired, I think this is awesome. Nice and soft, feels good. This is how you guys can tell I'm not sponsored. I'm talking about buying stuff used. <laughs> For base layers, pretty simple. Again, I just buy used Patagonia stuff. I buy Patagonia Capolini in the pants and the shirt. This works great, I use this every time. 
stays nice and dry, nice and warm, plenty of kind of breathability. The material is really nice without being too thick. If you like really warm base layers, you may want something thicker than this, but I like something where I can kind of shed heat if I need to, and it also has a nice texture. I'm really sensitive to textures, but Patagonia Capellini, really nice. I got this one on eBay and this one on the Patagonia U store. Didn't spend more than $30 on either. The U stuff is the way to go. I love it. I'll reuse it. Like I'll put a shirt like this underneath, like a synthetic shirt underneath this. That way, you know, I can wear this a few days in a row without it getting gross. And then I just have different colors. Like I have two of these different colors, mix and match it. If it's really warm, I'll actually take my mountain biking clothes <laughs> and wear that just because it does get really warm in the spring here. All right, next let's talk snow pants. Now I have these Patagonia snow pants. These were actually given to me as a gift by my dad. They didn't fit him anymore. These are just a shell, just a shell pant for Patagonia. I actually had them rip, like they tore in the crotch, and I sent them back to Patagonia, and they charged me nine bucks for the shipping, and then fixed them, no problem. Even though I didn't buy them. Even though I wasn't the original purchaser, and they're quite old, still work great. I'll be wearing these most of the year. This is what I wore last year, because while these were getting repaired, it did take a couple months to repair them. I didn't want to miss out on the season, so I bought a pair of North Face. Got these for about 100 bucks. Rather than buying the expensive bib version, I just put a pair of chums on there for like 20 bucks. I think it was 18 total. Yeah, you just get a like nice little chum thing. I really need suspenders, otherwise my pants fall down on me. I don't know if that's just because I'm an old man or what, but I love the chums. And that'll turn these into suspender snow pants as well. For socks, I just have different versions of smart wool. This is what I use 90% of the time, just that thin kind of smart wool, just the basic. I also have the thicker versions for other days. Socks, if you care to know, I love smart wool. It's always fit me the best. I've had Euro sock in the past, fell apart on me. I'm gonna try some darn toughs this year, but for right now, it's all smart wool all the way. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite things, mittens and gloves. So going oldest first, I have my old Rouge Excaliburs. These are from 2006, if you remember when Ted Ligeti won his first Olympic gold. This is what he had on. I've had these forever. I've literally had these now for 16, 17 years and they're still warm. They still, the leather is immaculate on them. There's a little discoloration, but that happened within like the first year. I love these Rouge mittens. I always go with mittens because I like to keep my hands warmer. I still wear these. They are just the best pair of mittens I've ever owned. I bought them in the summer for like 35 bucks back then and I've had them ever since. Next, I have my other Rouge mittens that I gotten maybe five years later when these started to get a little loose. Kevlar on the knuckles. I like to drag my knuckles when I ski. If I could go back, I probably would have gone to all leather because the leather part has held up perfectly. Now the next I have, I think they're called half pipe gloves. I, like I said, I'm warm all the time and especially for handling camera equipment, I really like these snowboard gloves because you can just grab things easily. My hands stay pretty warm. I like being able to grab my poles easily when I'm in the trees. They're Volcom. I forget what they're called. They're grippy here, but they were very inexpensive and I love using them, especially when I'm with my kids. I need to be able to pick them up on the chairlift. These work great. Lastly, this is the mitten that I just bought this summer. I got these off of Sideline Swap. Again, not advertised, not a commercial or anything, but I got these used from a former US ski team member. These are the Roosh uh, World Cup, I think it's called. These are nice mittens. I just got these for really cheap and I am so stoked. These are nice mittens. I got them for almost 30 bucks. The leather on Roosh has always held up for me. So these are my new mittens going into the year. Got them for super cheap, but really quality mittens I like having nice mittens because I don't know you just feel you feel it the kind of the whole way through and keeps keeping your hands warm is really important but yeah getting some Rouge race mittens if you know what to get I don't think there's anything better out there I've had Hestra I've had everything else these rule I've got my ski boots Atomic Hawks Prime Ultra I just got these in the mail a couple days ago I've been wearing them while I edit the videos to kind of like get them fit in I'm really excited about these I'm gonna make sure they fit perfectly before I put the booster on but the booster is kind of my I don't know my jam it's such a good upgrade on boots here you can see from last year my Lang LX 120s. I'm gonna keep these around until I make sure that my Atomics fit perfectly. I tried the other ones and I didn't really like them for this year. I'm not sure if they changed them or what. Got the booster strap on them. Love my Lang LX 120s. I really like them. I just put so much mileage on them and the footbed fell apart and the flex is trying to give away a little bit. These are very nice boots. And I'll keep them around just to make sure. Got my old Salmon ski bag. This was circa, I believe the gold mine in Sun Valley, which is a thrift store. I think I spent about eight bucks on it and I've had it for God knows how long, 15 years at least, pretty wild. For ski poles, I've got my Swix composite GS poles. God knows why I have them. I don't really like using them that much unless I'm like really sending it on a Super G Hill. They're just nice poles and I've kept them around. But this is what I daily drive. This is my Vocal Fantastic. It's a pun for fantastic. Nice big baskets. Love the handle grips on these. These are carbon 
I think they were about $100 when I got them. Very, very nice poles. This is what I use every day, and I absolutely love them. I can't believe these were 100 bucks. I've seen them. Typically, carbon is a lot more expensive than that, and I was really stoked about these. I, I love my poles. Poles is something I care about just because of grip and pole planning. I don't know. And then Vantage 90s. These are in a 176. This is what I used all year round this past year and the last three years. I got a 90 width. I use them in the powder and they work great. I use them uh, as rock skis now, but I have put so many days on these. I really was hard on them and they always pulled through for me. Really, really nice skis. I got them as ski swap. Got the Look SPX 12 on them. I've been really hard on them, but I still love them and I'll probably use them a lot early season, you know, with rocks and things like that as rock skis. Now this is my daily driver. This is the Atomic Maverick 88 Ti. Very similar to the Vantage. I got it in 176 as well, but it's basically just an improvement on the Vantage. It's lighter, it has a little more kind of like shape in the tip and the tail. It kind of pops in and out of turns. It's got more camber than those skis. These Maverick 88 Ti's are my favorite skis, especially like loading up a slalom turn. These things just slay. I really, really love these skis. If you see a packet of powder, you can kind of hop off trail into that powder. Really, there's no part of the mountain you can't explore. The only hang up is sometimes on really heavy, wet snow. You might get kind of hung up because they're so light. You might want something I would call like a crud cutter, something like a Mantra or a K2 Mine Better. But 99% of the time, this is what I want to be skiing on. I love carving on them. I love making slalom DGS turns on these. Really, really my favorite ski. And then finally, my newest ski that I just got. I got these on sale over the summer. The Salomon QST 106. I demoed the QST 98. Really just wanted a designated powder ski, something that was gonna give me more powder oriented skiing versus the Maverick 88. But man, I am so excited about these. I love the shape. They kind of have that second bulge that holds you in the turn. I've yet to try the 106 specifically in the powder, but just based on the 98's performance, I'm so excited for these. Something that can still kind of charge carving, but also is really powder oriented. I'm excited to have just a designated pair of powder skis because it's been years since I did. And I, I don't know, I'm just so stoked for these. So yeah. So that's my setup head to toe. Thank you so much for watching this content. If you like it, if you could like and subscribe, that really helps my channel out. I just really appreciate you guys watching this content at all. It means a lot to me that people are watching and listening. And um, yeah, more than anything, thank you for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. As always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.